so here we go, round one. I can barely hear myself think in this arena right now. Two of the most dominant, well-rounded fighters in this division. I mean, these guys are the best of all the mixed martial arts. They can do everything when they're locked inside of the octagon. I'm so excited to watch the highest level of MMA on display tonight. Oh, nice land there with the punch. You see, he's taking advantage of what is an obvious edge in reach. Liver kick. Just misses there with the left. Big powerful punch land. Now to get back to range. Right on the button. Oh, now gets an underhook to get a more dominant position. Nice job defensively there. Good work with the hips. Nice jab. Falls it up with a nice right hand. He is throwing a fast, straight, hard jab. That's not a feeler jab. That's one that's really knocking the head back. Look at the whip action. Hustle never stops. I got no brakes. You ready to ride? We want revenge. We want justice. We're gonna jump onto a moving train? I got you! Jump! Oh, you gotta be kidding me! When in doubt, do what I do. I stopped a Dyson Bladeless fan and then glued a CPU overclocking kit to it. That, my friends, is the first, like, 30 minutes of Horizon Zero Dawn. This is a game that has you play as Aloy, exploring a mysterious land filled with robot dinosaurs that are so scary they don't even need to transform. And this game already succeeded in 2017 when it came out for the PS4. It comes out this week for the PC on Steam and the Epic Game Store. It's for $49.99. That includes Horizon Zero Dawn as well as the expansion. Also, thanks to Sony for a review code for this game. As you guys know, I don't do reviews that are two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. So that means when I get a code, even from the devs, I go out and get a code myself. I'll be giving that away to somebody who watches the video. So my hard-earned cash is on the line, just like yours. Let's begin. Graphics are up first. Now, I do have to say, Sony have a day one patch that's supposed to go live prior to you guys getting this. I'll update this review in the first comment if anything changes, as this specifically does hit on one point I did have, but doesn't change the score. It was noticeable, and I'll talk about that. I like to imagine that when Horizon Zero Dawn was created, it was just some designer sitting back watching Clan of the Cave Bear, and someone said, you know what this needs? A fine layer of neon and fire. Horizon Zero Dawn shows how much art design and world design matter, even when compared to cold, hard technical elements of games and their designs. While it was no slouch on the PS4 at 30 FPS, it's excellent to finally unleash the beast and allow Horizon to sort of stretch its scaly little legs and show some of the work at a higher fidelity and frame rate than was ever possible on the PS4 or the Pro. Horizon excels in many places. The world that Aloy and her friends and enemies encounter is one of captivating use of scale and color, from the soaring mountains you climb precariously to perch with these robotic passerine that watch over the lands of robot dinosaur kind, or if you're just creeping stealthily through the crimson top vegetation that rings a valley floor as you skirt past a group of chargers that have claimed that place as their own. What many other games handle with a rough hand and a lack of subtlety that equals green grass is grown right up to the sun. Traverse the city, looking for gear and enemies. You'll discover the different environments create diverse gameplay opportunities and challenges. Your competition may come from any angle. Every battle in Hyperscape is a fresh experience where you leverage the varied arsenal you will find in Neo Arcadia. Your loadout is not determined by the character you choose, but by the weapons and hacks you loot. From full auto assault weapons to powerful energy blasters, there is a tool for any playstyle. Hacks are game-changing abilities you loot around the map that grant skills for offense, defense, and movement. You can loot two weapons and two hacks and swap them at any time if you need to change your strategy. The choice is in your hands. If you find a copy of a weapon or hack you already have in your possession, you can fuse it, creating an upgraded version. Each item can be upgraded several levels, improving magazine size, damage, or cooldown duration. 
As you discover your footing in the hyperscape, your squad will be there to help you. Use the ping system to sync with your squad and warn them of potential threats or alert them to potential resources. If an enemy manages to take you out, the battle is not over. At zero health, you'll become an echo and you can help your squad by scouting ahead. Challenges, which provided a fun carrot to chase across multiple playthroughs that was easy to keep track of thanks to the logbook. You'll be attacked by everything from suicidal exploding jellyfish to lumbering stone golems that fire off a devastating but easy to dodge laser from afar, and the resulting variety keeps combat engaging as the threat ramps up. Distinct silhouettes and audio cues make it easy to react to an impending threat at a moment's notice. Boss fights, too, are well telegraphed to feel fair, and their size and spectacle evoke a feeling of challenge. The increasing difficulty is constant, but the rate at which you advance to the next environment is up to you, and that's a good thing, since some unlocks require you to beat a certain number of levels at a hurried pace. At some point, I'd like to see the option for a definitive end-of-run challenge to cap it all off, but even currently, there are a few handcrafted battles found in mysterious portals and hidden passageways. These boss fights are fantastic, requiring a well-developed build and a well-executed strategy. There are plenty of other easter eggs too, like a mysterious security chest or a cosmic jumping puzzle. I'd love to see more of these cryptic and challenging elements added to Risk of Rain 2 on the road to its full release. Killing enemies lines your pockets with gold needed to gear up via chests and containers, but that's not the only way to progress. There are plenty of interactables that provide a fun risk-reward dynamic. The Challenge of the Mountain, for instance, doubles or even triples the number of bosses for proportionately multiplied rewards. As a result, I felt in control of how much gear I acquired during any given run, just not what I was getting. The randomization of loot undoubtedly plays a big part in giving Risk of Rain 2 its tremendous replayability, but at times, it felt like a flat-out hindrance, because I simply couldn't seem to find crucial common items that were usually abundant. There are a few choices to be made, like at the Bazaar Between Time, where you can spend rare lunar currency that persists across playthroughs, but for the most part, you're at the mercy of